Last week, we heard from shark biologist Ryan Johnson. He was talking primarily about how he and his colleagues captured the best piece of footage we've seen of a great white shark breaching while in hunting mode. Being able to sit there as a scientist and watch a record understand this dynamic really is exciting. This week, we're going to hear from him again as we learn more about his experience of working with great white sharks for two decades. Welcome to Deep Blue Discovery. Mossel Bay, South Africa. Over the 20 years I've worked with the Great Whites, you do get stuck in situations that are definitely dangerous. Hardly ever because the shark's going out and trying to attack, but because it's just such a big animal. And as a scientist, you put yourself in really, sometimes dumb, but really difficult positions to get the data that you need to get. And, you know, a lot of our safety protocols is about making relationships with the harbour masters, the tugboat guys, the hospitals, having those emergency protocols and that risk profile all mapped out so that when something does happen, you know this is step one, two, three and four to get everybody safe and to get, you know, hopefully if the shark is in a funny position to get the shark safe as well. So specifically with the breaching behavior, trying to elicit that breach, these sharks will only breach in that low light, which is early morning or late evening. So in a day, you've got two hours in the morning and you've got two hours in the evening that you work. Also seasonally, they're only going to be breaching during our winter months, which is May, June, July through to maybe September. So to collect this data, you've got very, very distinct periods during the day and through during the season where you can actually do it. Rest of the day, then you can start chumming, you can start attracting the sharks and you get different types of data. But that's more in a sort of a scavenging environment rather than a natural predator environment. So this particular breach of behavior is very small windows where you actually can collect it. The biggest moment happened way back for me in 2007 when uh, we were first tracking these sharks around the sea line and trying to map their hunting behavior and and although it's rare and we believe it's still rare today we did manage to film and observe one of the great white sharks hunting in the dead of night and that sort of was was sort of this aha moment because your whole idea was that they do need light these are visual predators then you suddenly got a situation where the, the shark successfully hunted a seal in no light and you're like dang, what's going on here? And you have to sort of go back to the drawing board, relook at their eyes, relook at the vision, relook at all the ways these sharks are actually locating their prey and tracking down their prey. And, uh, you know, it opened up a heck of a lot of questions that we then had to investigate. But that was, that for me was probably the biggest moment in terms of the predator-prey dynamics. I've watched probably hundreds of these attacks and once you've watched a few back online you start again looking for other things you're looking at how the shark orientates itself looking for movements of the mouth is it gaping is it rolling its eyes back what angles it's coming so yeah you definitely start looking deeper and deeper into it and other and scientists definitely do that they they love looking and trying to find new things Particularly nowadays with these great little cameras that are 4K, super slow-mo, with that type of footage you can get back, you can really go into the behavior of these sharks, really look frame by frame what's going on and it's, it's, there's a lot to learn. There certainly is a lot to learn and we hope you learned a bit from this incredibly interesting interview with Ryan. Thanks for watching Deep Blue Discovery. We're back next week with more awesome sea life footage.